This video is about some of the other productivity techniques, routines, and applications that I have been implementing and adopting over the last several years. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love all things productivity. And the reason for that isn't just to be 100% productive all the time. Rather, it is so I can get everything done that I need to get done and then still have time to spend on the things that I really want to do or the people that I really want to be able to spend time with and not be thinking in the back of my mind, oh, I really need to get this done or I don't have time to spend with my family because I am too busy with all these other tasks that I need to get done in my life. The last video I posted was on Alfred, another productivity tool that I use frequently, which will not be included in this video, but it's part of my larger productivity playlist. So feel free to check that one out as well. And then pretty soon I will be making a video about how I use the getting things done method for keeping track of all of my tasks and things like that. I hope you enjoy this video. The tool that I've been using for a while now is called Leech Block. It's basically a browser extension that can block any websites whenever I want or based off of specific time periods throughout the day. For example, these three websites I block all of the time. So if I want to go and check my Twitter, for example, I have to specifically come in here and unblock it before I can use it. And then I have many other different sets of blocked sites. Some of them I just block for a set time every day. For example, I block YouTube in the mornings so that I'm not checking YouTube right when I wake up. And there's also a lot of options that you can set for this extension. The only problem is that it just works in Firefox which is my main browser, but I have been using Brave more often. And I also use mobile browsers on my phone. So even though I have everything set in here, it doesn't really work for every use case that I have. So what I've started using again is actually this app called Freedom. This is a really popular app, so you probably heard about it. It basically works to block websites and apps across all your computers and devices. Now I used this years ago, but it didn't work for blocking apps on the iPhone. So then I stopped using it because I figured, hey, I might as well just use a plain browser blocker. But I recently looked at this again and it does work now. They're using something called a local VPN, which actually works fine with my other VPN. And I can block any apps or websites across any mobile or desktop browser that I want. Now, I was at first concerned about the privacy, what they were doing with my information, but I read through the privacy policy and it actually looks pretty good. And I'm gonna show you the most important part here. So tracking, it says, because our products limit app and website use, we are often asked if we track app and website use. The answer is simple. We do not track, store, retain, or transmit your app or website use. This is great. They mention one exception if you want to install their Insight plugin for browser history where they have to record your browser history. But even for this plugin, all data is stored locally on the user's device and is not transmitted anywhere. We may expand these personal analytics products in the future, but this will be via opt-in and be designed to maximize privacy. I think that is awesome. So I've started using this again and I'm still working out my schedules, which apps I want to block when. I can basically set as many recurring sessions as I want in here. And then I can set as many different block lists as I want, similar to Leech Block, but with a slightly nicer interface, I suppose. All of this works well across devices. I've tried this out on the iPhone and I really like it. There are a couple things that are just constant distractions for me. Even though I keep my phone away from me while at work, there are still times when I pick up my phone and I get distracted and go down some kind of huge rabbit hole. So this is really helping with that. They do give you a free trial. 
So you can test it out and see if you like it. And then the yearly fee is only $2.49 a month. So I think that's totally worth it for me. And I believe this is even cheaper than when I used this in the past. When I started this whole productivity journey, one of the first things that I did was start to track my time and figure out where I was squandering time without even realizing it and just in general how I was spending my time. For a while, I actually used this app, Rescue Time. I think I used it for a couple months. It is a paid product, but they give you a 14-day free trial. And it basically is just this, automatic time tracking, distraction blocking, and more. I was just using it for automatic time tracking since I do so much on the computer it really helped me to see, to a large extent, how I was spending my time throughout the day. Of course, in addition to that, I had a general time log where I was logging down what time I was doing what, how long I spent doing different things, and then I would compare it to my rescue time analytics at the end of the day or the end of the week. There's a saying, what gets measured gets improved. And that's really what I was trying to do with time logging. I wasn't trying to micromanage my time. I was really trying to improve it so I wasn't so busy all the time, but still feeling like I wasn't accomplishing everything I wanted to accomplish. And this also helped me really reorganize and prioritize things in my schedule. I don't think you need to time track forever. It just helps me from time to time to do it, to kind of reevaluate how I'm spending my time. And at first, it helped me to do it over the period of a couple months off and on. I love using timers. For some reason, starting a timer really helps me start to focus on work. And if I'm really procrastinating on something, I don't want to do something, I just kind of trick my mind and say, hey, I'm just going to set a timer for 10 minutes. And all I have to do is only think about and only try to work on this thing for 10 minutes. And for some reason, I'm able to relax, not feel overwhelmed, and just start working on that thing. And then usually I end up working on it for a lot longer than 10 minutes. I used to use the Pomodoro method and set Pomodoro timers for sometimes 25 minutes, but usually 50 minutes at a time. But now that I got an Apple Watch, I set it to remind me every hour to take a break, stand up, and stretch a little bit, maybe walk around for a few minutes. So I'll either set a timer on my Apple Watch or just use the stopwatch feature and then I can stop it whenever I'm done working, which seems to work a little bit better since I have that alarm anyway to remind me to not be sitting at my computer all day. Another simple thing that I do when I lack motivation or just won't get started doing something or maybe I'm having trouble context switching, is use the five second rule. It's basically where in my head I start counting down from five and I give myself those five seconds to stop doing what I'm doing, start doing whatever I need to do, something like that. So I count five, four, three, two, one, and sometimes that's giving myself five seconds to get out of bed, close the browser tab that I'm looking at, or something else. If you want to know the psychology behind this, then I encourage you to read Mel Robbins' book or watch her TED Talk, which is available for free on YouTube. She goes over the psychology behind it and really how helpful it can be for productivity. One more tool that I use that has really helped me out is having a programmable keyboard. As a developer working on your computer all the time, it's very handy to be able to program the keys to be whatever I want them to be instead of having to reach in weird ways for the escape key, for example, since I'm a Vim user, I'm always hitting escape. And on the Mac, I have to reach up all the way into the top left-hand side of the keyboard to try to hit this tiny escape button, which is even worse on the newer Macs that don't have a physical escape key. So on a programmable board, like the one I happen to have, which is Ergodox, I put the escape key right at my pinky finger so my hands don't even have to leave the home row to be able to hit the escape key. 
Now these keyboards are also really nice because I can have different kinds of macros which are basically key combinations that are combined into one key. For example, I have command shift bracket to the right and the left so I can change tabs when I'm in different programs. And I also have control over just as a single key because I'm always switching in between desktops on my Mac. On top of that, I have different layers that I program. So I can hold down one key basically and switch between these different layers, layer one, layer two, layer three, and then I can even have things like my mouse or my angle brackets and parentheses and everything really close to my home row. This helps me with speed and it also really helps my wrists as I'm programming so I don't get as much wrist pain or finger pain as I'm moving things in weird ways. Now I do really like this keyboard. I'm not sponsored by them, but this is the second time that I've bought one of those keyboards. I think they make an excellent product. Of course, it's a very custom design, so it's a little bit pricier than other keyboards, so it's an investment that you'll have to figure out if it's worth it for you. There are plenty of other programmable keyboards out there, but I haven't tried them enough to be able to review them. I just know that I really like this one, it's comfortable, and it works well for me. I might actually do a more complete review of this keyboard at some point as well. If you want to see my exact keyboard layout, I'll link that in the description below. If you are struggling with productivity or feeling like you can't keep up with everything, feeling like you're always late, always distracted, and you need some kind of system to just help you navigate life, I felt the same way, and I still feel the same way sometimes, but I want to recommend some books for you to read that really helped me. I mentioned earlier the book Make Time, which I think is really excellent, and here are four more books that I have read multiple times now and that have really helped me. So the first one is, of course, Getting Things Done by David Allen. If you can't read any other book about productivity, then I recommend you read that one. And I recommend you read it and you reread it until you fully understand all the different methods that he's using. And also follow all of the steps that he recommends, like capturing everything, using physical and digital inboxes, and so on. He goes over so much information, I can't break it all down here. There's also another one that I really liked. It was called Indistractable. And it's basically about how many distractions we have around us all the time in this highly connected social media age and how to, well, basically be indistractable, not get distracted by all of those things. Another one is digital minimalism. It's about cleaning up your digital clutter. And the final book that I recommend is Deep Work. This book really helped me to start learning how to deeply focus and get a lot more done in less time. If you have any thoughts about these books or you have any more book recommendations, I always love to read, so please leave them in the comments below this video. Thanks so much for watching. Like always, if you have anything to add to this conversation, I would love to discuss it with you. Feel free to leave it in the comments below or join me over on my Discord chat to continue the conversation. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video and my channel. If you are interested in more programming videos and videos like this that are tangentially related to programming and important for us as developers. I hope you have a great day. Take care and I will see you in the next video.